By the powers conferred on me as the Secretary of the Body of Ventures, I call the House to order and welcome the Chairman and all benchers to this unique occasion of the December 2022 call to bar ceremony. May I also take the opportunity to felicitate with parents, guardians, well-wishers, and friends of the applicants here present and those viewing the live coverage of this call to bar ceremony. May I now, with the leave of the Chairman Body of Benchers, call on the Chairman of the Council of Legal Education to step forward to report on the state of readiness of the applicants for call. Mr. Chairman, sir. Mr. Chairman, sir, the students of Nigerian Law School who have successfully completed their training and passed the bar final examination conducted by the Council of Legal Education are ready for present presentation to the Board of Ventures for call to the bar. May I respectfully, Mr. Chairman, seek leave to call on the Director General of Nigerian Law School Professor Issa Hayatu Chiroma, S-A-N-D-S-S-R-S, -S to present the report and to summon the applicants for call and to appear before the Honorable Chambers, or Honorable Benchers. Mr. Chairman, sir. Benchers, please, by as free. As the Chairman pleases. The Chairman of Body of Ventures, Chief Wale Ola Nepakun, CFR, OFN, OFR, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Live Venture, the Vice Chairman of Body of Ventures, Honorable Justice Mary Peter Odili, JSC, CFR, Live Venture, the Immediate Past Chairman of Body of Ventures, Boros Bible, JSC, CFR, Live Venture, Chief Justice of, the, of Nigeria, Honorable Justice Oluka Ede Ariola, GCON Live Venture. The Honorable Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Mr. Abakar Malami, CON, Senior Advocate of Nigeria Live Venture. Past Chairman of Body of Ventures, the Chairman of Council of Legal Education, Chief Emeka Ngige, OFR, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Distinguished Honorable Members of Body of Ventures, Honorable Justices, and Grand Cardis here present. The President of the Nigerian Bar Association, Mr. Yaku Mekiao, ON, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. The Director General, the Gambian Law School, Mrs. Rogi Thomasi. Members of Ina and Autaba, distinguished Senators, honorable members of House of Representatives, Executive Governors here present, our Royal Fathers, proud parents, guardians, and relations. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I consider it a great honor and privilege to welcome you all to this solemn and memorable ceremony for the admission to the Nigerian Bar of successful candidates at the August and September 2022 Bar Final Examination conducted by the Nigerian Law School under the supervision of the Council of Legal Education. I sincerely congratulate all the successful candidates for their hard work and dedication, the joyous reason of our presence here today. To all the proud parents and relations, I convey warm felicitations on the remarkable success of these candidates, who in a short time will become the new weeks of the Nigerian Bar and proud members of our noble profession. As expected, 
Let me, at this auspicious occasion, on behalf of the Council of Legal Education, management, staff, and students of Nigeria Law School invite you all to share in the success and joy of these candidates we are celebrating today. No doubt, the renewed learning skills, knowledge acquired, and expressed by our soon to become new weeks brings great joy to the entire Nigerian Law School community. Establishment of the Council of Legal Education and Nigerian Law School. The Council of Legal Education was established by Legal Education Act 1962 to provide vocational training for law graduates aspiring for call to Nigerian bar. The Nigerian Law School, which is the training arm of the Council of Legal Education, is a multi-campus institution with headquarters in Abuja and campuses in Lagos, Inugu, Kano, Yenegua, Yola, and a newly commissioned Patakot campus. For, from these locations, we train over 6,000 students annually. Continuing progress at the Nigerian Law School. Again, as reported previously, we have continued to leverage from the achievements of our past teachers and leaders. Today, the Nigerian Law School has had, has had to sustain its enviable growth and development for nearly six decades to the admiration of many. The importance of the Nigerian Law School in manpower training and development for our, our country cannot be overemphasized, particularly in the aspect of administration of justice and sustenance of rule of law. It is crystal clear that from the inception, the Nigerian Law School has, had been, has been solely responsible for the vocational practical training of university law graduates for admission to the Nigerian bar. From its humble beginning in 1963, with eight students at its one block campus at 213A, Ibochere Road, Lagos, the Nigerian Law School has grown to a seven campus institution spread across the country with yearly intake of over 6,000 students. This is a testimony to the healthy economical growth, not just of the institution, but also in the legal profession. In about 60 years of its existence, the school has had uninterrupted sessions. There has never been any incident of closure of the institution, of account of students' arrest, strike action by staff, or any other reason. The Nigerian Law School has contributed to the training of the entire arm of government, that is the judiciary. It is a tribute to the school that all judges of various courts in Nigeria including our Chief Justice of Current Chief Justice of the Federation, are products of Nigerian Law School. Likewise, the Honorable Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, all Attorneys General and Commissioners for Justice of, and their law, office, and law officers serving in their chambers are products of Nigerian Law School. It is also significant to note that a large number of members of other tiers of government in the country are products of Nigerian Law School. The school has also contributed to the training of legal manpower for our sister African countries, like the Republic of the Gambia, Republic of Sierra Leone, Republic and Republic of Cameroon. A number of countries from the East and West Africa have visited law school to solicit information and assistance. On, on how to establish and develop their law schools from their, in their own various countries. The product of the school have commanding presence in other spheres of public and private sectors, such as the military, police, customs, immigration, the oil and gas sector, banking and finance, insurance, and the corporate world in general, professors, lecturers in the universities, and other tertiary institutions. Some of these products have achieved profound feat of getting to the top of their own career, nationally and across the border. Brief report on the academic excellence and fiscal infrastructural, infrastructural development at the Nigerian Law School. The Nigerian Law School, under our own watch, has witnessed and, exp and expressed more positive transformation in the areas of academics, better administrative and physical infrastructure development, again, and of course, building on the past achievements and legacies. The Nigerian Law School campus have equally witnessed, uh, in the period under review, new constructions, renovations, and remodeling of many structures and buildings that hitherto continue to suffer serious neglect on account of poor budgetary provisions. It is no longer news that we, that we achieved and still making the difference largely due to prudent use of very lean resources at our own disposal through gracious intervention of good spirited Nigerians, organizations, and other stakeholders. Major interventions and big stories. 
History was made on Friday, November 18, 2022, when a campus named after the former Attorney General of the Federation and former Chairman of Council of Legal Education, Dr. Nabo Graham Douglas, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, was officially commissioned and handed over to the Council of Legal Education by the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, thus making it the seventh campus of the Nigerian Law School. As reported in my last address to your distinguished body, the big story which is today a testament of promise made and fulfilled came to light when the federal government received the request from the government of River State to build, equip, and hand over a brand new campus of the Nigerian Law School to the Council of Legal Education. This kind request was granted and conveyed through the Honorable Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, has now produced this magnificent and ultra-modern edifice of the world of world-class standard. If you permit me, Mr. Chairman, I will refer to it as the best law school campus in Nigeria and even in African continent. We cannot thank His Excellency, the government and good people of River State enough for this proactive and progressive intervention. Mr. Chairman, Sakari recalled that the government of River State, under the leadership of His Excellency Jason Wike, CON, also graciously approved the construction of some critical projects for the Enagua campus of the Nigerian Law School. The projects include one, a 1,500 seating capacity auditorium, two, two 900 bed space male and female hostels. I am happy to report to this very important assemblage that those projects that were flagged up by the Honorable Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Mr. Abukar Malemi, SAN, on Friday, June 4, 2021, at the Nigeria Law School Enagua campus by SR State are now at various stages of completion. These interventions are indeed gratifying and cause for celebration. We thank most profoundly Mr. President and Governor of River State, as well as the Honorable Attorney General of Federation and Minister of Justice, for making this possible. Just recently, precisely on the 30th of June 2022, the class of 1986 of the Nigerian Law School commissioned and handed over a brand new ultra modern twin moot court building by the by the class at the Nigerian Law School headquarters of Bari. May I also report that an illustrious member of that class, His Excellency, the Deputy Senate President, Senator Ovi Omar Gege, offered to replicate what the class has done on behalf of the class. Work has commenced since at the same location, and work is about to be completed. May I also use this medium to thank and appreciate our benefactors for their kind interventions and firm belief in the Nigerian Law School renewal project. May God reward you all. May you also reward your kind intervention and assistance. Proposed Diamond Jubilee Ceremony of the Nigerian Law School. Mr. Chairman, sir, it is no longer news that effective January 2023, by the grace of God, that our premier and only institution, which has the sole mandate of vocational training of law graduates in Nigeria, will be six years. You will all agree with us that this is a great fit and calls for celebration. Pass one to above, the Council of Legal Education has proposed a diamond jubilee celebration and constituted relevant committees to professionally mark this great achievement. Details of these activities with programs as well as invitations will be communicated as soon as possible. Presentation of the August stroke September 2022 bar final examination results. General performance. Mr. Chairman, sir, distinguished members of body of benches, I will be presenting at this call to bar ceremony, a total of 4,691 candidates who are successful at the August-September 22 bar final examination and 20 candidates from previous calls. Previous call. I am happy to report on the good performance recorded by these candidates as seen in the executive summary below. Total number of students who participated in the examination were 5,802. Total number that was successful, 4,691. This figure translates to 80.8.1% success at the bar final examination. I wish to assure all of you that we shall remain the gatekeepers of our noble profession. As teachers and administrators, we will continue to uphold the standard and integrity of the bar to the new weeks. I sincerely congratulate our candidates for call to the bar today. I also felicitate with their parents, guardians, and relations on being part of this memorable and auspicious occasion. 
No doubt today is a day of great joy for you all, having come this far, in realizing your dream of becoming members of this noble profession of law. My prayer for you all is that the Almighty God will grant you, will grant all of you a rewarding career at the bar. I enjoy you to make the best of the legal profession, since it is your own free will to belong to it. You must also ensure strict adherence to its norms and ethics. Wish you the best for the future. Sincere appreciation. May I at this junction, distinguished chairman, members of Body of Ventures, seek leave of Mr. Chairman and distinguished members of Body of Ventures to thank our supervisory ministry, the Federal Minister of Justice, headed by the Honorable Attorney General and Minister of Justice, uh, Mr. Abokar Malemi, C-O-N-S-N, for the support always given to our institution. May I use this opportunity also to welcome the Director General of the Gambian Law School, Ms. Rogi Tomasi, for visiting Nigeria purposely to attend this course to bar ceremony. We appreciate this visit, and we are sure it's, it will strengthen the existing relationship between our law schools. The same appreciation goes to chairman and members of the distinguished body of benchers for their constant support and encouragement. I must also mention the secretary of the distinguished body of benchers, headed by Mr. Daniel M. Taylor, Esquire, for his cooperation with us at all times. Finally, with all sense of responsibility and duty, I wish to commend the excellent work ethics of Niger academic and non-academic staff of Nigeria Law School, who work tirelessly and most time beyond the call to duty to ensure the task of producing the legal manpower needs of our country is sufficiently attained. Affirmation of character, learning and character. Distinguished Chairman of Body of Ventures, sir, distinguished members of Body of Ventures, may I now present you this aspirant here assembled this morning for call to Nigerian Bar. They wish to and are eligible to become members of the learned and noble profession of law. They have successfully completed the vocational training at the Nigerian Law School as prescribed by the Legal Education Act. They have all taken the prescribed examination as well as the dining terms and met all the required conditions set by the Council of Legal Education. I am happy to report and to affirm that, that they all exhibited good manners and decorum during their training. They have also been groomed in the best ethics and ethos of our own noble profession. Together with other academy and non-academy members of Nigerian Law School, I have closely monitored these aspirants during their training, and I watch for each and every one of them as men and women of learning and character, as demanded by our August body. The screening committee of the distinguished body has carefully perused the records of each of the aspirants and found them worthy, worthy to be presented for call to, Niger, uh, to the Nigerian bar. I attest that they are fit and proper persons for call and admission to the Nigerian bar. Mr. Chairman, may I respectfully on, uh, and in my own honor present to the distinguished body of benchers the following aspirants, 4,711 from the total list of qualified applicants for call to the bar, this, uh, for call to bar at this ceremony. Thank you for the privilege and God bless. By the bars from far, and the body of benches, that's a complete option one of the new Constitutional Act, and by the fans from far down the of the German of the World of Ventures, the Red Bull 6, of the World of Ventures Regulation 1950. I hereby admit each and of you standing here this morning, the applicants, severally to the bar, as barristers and solicitors of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. You may now put on your wings.
Mr. Chairman, sir, may I respectfully invite you to deliver your address and your charge to the new weeks. Mr. Chairman, sir. Our there learned friends, can you take your seats? <laughs> the Vice Chairman of the Body of Benches, Honorable Justice Mary Peter Odili, CFR, Life Bencher. The Chief Justice of Nigeria, Honorable Justice Olukayo Diariwola, GCON, Life Bencher. May I pause here to appreciate the Chief Justice of Nigeria because, by the past vested in me as the Chairman of the Body of Benchers, I pleaded with the CDN that he should be here this morning. Thank you, my Lord CDN. Past Chairman of the Body of Benchers, former Chief Justices of Nigeria, Live Benchers and Benchers, the Honorable Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, CONSCN, the Chairman Council of Legal Education, Chief Emeka Ngigi, OFR, SCN, President of the Nigerian Bar Association, Yakubu Nikiau, ON, SCN, in absentia. Honorable judges and caddies, distinguished ladies, distinguished members of the National Assembly, honorable ministers of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, members of the Inner and Outer Bar, the Director General of the Nigerian Law School, Professor Issa Hayatu Shiroma, SEN, your Royal Highnesses who are present, proud parents and guidance of the new weeks. I recognize the presence of the General Secretary of the Nigerian Bar Association, Adeshina Adebiti Esquire. Thank you for coming. I recognize the presence of armed colleagues, members of the Nigerian Bar Association who are here, both as benchers and seated here. The Nigerian Bar Association is, rep Association is represented here. We want to appreciate you for coming, for sharing the joy of this day with these our children. And our colleagues, may God bless you as you come to honor the body of benches and our profession, a profession that belongs to all of us. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure and excitement that I, on behalf of the body of benches, here and after I refer to as the body, welcome you all to this historic occasion of the call of new entrants to the Nigerian bar we all rejoice with our new colleagues who will now address the Sahelian friends on this new dawn, which marks a fulfillment of their dreams to join the noble and honorable profession of law. I pray for you, as the chairman of the Body of Benchers, and as a parent, and as a senior citizen of this country, that nobody will spoil your joy. Amen. We are joined to rejoice with those who are rejoicing and celebrate with those who are celebrating. Thus, we join ourselves with you in communion of prayers, not just in rejoicing, but also in celebrating the landmark achievement of today. An achievement which has not come in the jiffy, but spanned a period of between five to six years of extensive and in-depth learning and research, the first five years of which were spent in your respective universities, where you were subjected to learning the theories and principles of law on different subjects, including but not limited to constitutional law, law of torts, of contract, criminal law, law of evidence, jurisprudence, land law, administrative law, Nigerian legal system, labor law, oil and gas, environmental law, international law, communication law, and others. 
when the last one year has been spent at the Nigerian Law School, under the tutelage of highly qualified and experienced legal minds who took you through the practical and some theoretical aspects of the law, and only which time as well, some leading members of the profession have come to deliver in lectures to you on topical issues touching on both adjective and procedural aspects of law. Through this last year again, you have been made to partake in the compulsory dining rise during which you met with the leaders of the body of benches, who after each dining session gave you some pep talks on the hidden secrets and traditions of the profession and profound ways of success to you. The Council of Legal Education conducted your bar final examinations and adjured you academically qualified to be called to the Nigerian bar. Then after submitted, you submitted your name, they submitted your names to the body, being the only body with the prerogative for admitting you to the bar. For scrupulous training, in order to ensure that each and every one of you is indeed a fit and proper person to be admitted to the Nigerian bar. The screening committee of the body under the traditional statutory chairmanship of the vice chairman, met, painstakingly screened each of you, looked at your certificates and forms, fed by you before recommending you to the body for consideration for call to the bar. Traditionally as well, the body met on Monday, 5th December 2022, considered the report, the report of the screening committee, and approved the same person to which the final decision was taken that you should be called to the Nigerian bar. I'm not unaware of the fact that all this while is being a period of anxiety for you and your parents. First, when you are awaiting your results at the Nigerian Law School, and later, when you are eagerly expecting the outcome of the report of the screening committee and subsequent decisions of the body of benches as you are being adjudged fit and proper to be called to the bar. Having gone through these painstaking labyrinths, immediately before now, Having been admitted to the bar as barristers and solicitors and directed, and I directed you to put on your wigs, one could only imagine the depth of your ecstasy, as well as the fulfillment of your appearance and guidance on this beautiful day. I extend hearty and most sincere congratulations and best of wishes to you and your parents as I formally address you as my learned friends. The body of pensions. Although it is now common knowledge, or should have been taken for granted that the body of benches is a creation of statute, and Section 3 of the Legal Practitioners Act, specifically Subsection 1, thereof provides thus, and I read, there shall be a body of legal practitioners of the highest decision in legal profession in Nigeria to be known as the body of benches. We shall be responsible for the formal call to the bar of persons seeking to become legal practitioners. It's become necessary. If you have recently concessioned about what the body represents, how it is constituted, its jurisdiction and the way and manner it is run, and manage to briefly recap, even for the opting time and for record purposes, what the body is, what the body represents, what it does, what it does not do, as well as its powers and jurisdiction, the ways our meetings are held. The, the, the news media is uh, you know, awash with stories, with tales, moonlight tales, of what goes on in the bit of the body of benches. These are the best of the very best in the profession. And even as I'm addressing you now, rejoicing with you, with your parents and guidance, some news are being paid, news is being peddled in the social media and some, you know, some media platforms about what the body does not represent. Misrepresentation about the body of benches from very unusual quarters. This is not the tradition of the profession that I joined in 1976. And I was called to the bar together with Marcy Okafor and Kwaku in 1976 by just the Honorable Justice Joe Emimo, who was then the chairman of the body of benches. We have to remove the logs in our eyes before talking, seeing, and peeping into the, into the specks in other people's eyes. This profession belongs to all of us. Members of the Bar Association are here. I am a proud member of the Bar Association. I was president of that association. I gloriously led it in 2002 to 2004. Nobody can tell me stories about the association. 
I want to assure you that the integrity of your call, the solemnity of faith, is not impacted and can never be impacted. You are on firm and firm ground. I want to appreciate the members of the body of benchers who are here. I've been a member of the body of benchers since 1992. And very few calls have witnessed this large turnout of distinguished members of the body of benchers. Very few. And I stand to be corrected. Statutorily, the body is made up of the Chief Justice of Nigeria and all justices of the Supreme Court, the President of the Court of Appeal and all presiding justices of the divisions of the Court of Appeal, the Attorney General of the Federation and all attorneys of the states, Chief Judges of the High Court in the country, Federal Court, Federal High Court, FCT and the states, President of the Nigerian Bar Association, the Chairman of the Council of Legal Education, 30 legal practitioners representing the bar, live benchers, and such number of persons not exceeding 10 who appear to the body to be eminent members of the legal profession in Nigeria, of not less than 15 years post college standing. Not less a person than the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Nigeria, the President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR. Graphically, said this about this August body on 29 September 2022, and I quote Mr. President, I consider this body as critical to the legal profession. I say this because the membership of the body cuts across all faces of the government and the legal profession, particularly the executive, the legislature, the judiciary. Furthermore, all justices of the Supreme Court, retired justice, chief justices of Nigeria, who are alive, president of the Court of Appeal and presiding justices, chief judges of the High Courts, the federal and states, attorneys general of the judiciary, the chairman of judiciary committees in the two houses of the National Assembly, leading members of the bar and others constitute this body. I'm not unaware of any other institution or organ in the legal profession that draws its membership from all segments of the profession, like the body of benchers. No wonder the statute described it as, as constituting of men of the highest distinction in the legal profession. Now, I owe you a duty to let you appreciate some of those who have turned up this morning to rejoice with you, to call you to the bar on behalf of the body of ventures. I'm only representing them. I'm not the body of ventures. I'm only representing them. Amongst them is the Chief Justice of Nigeria. How lucky you are. The Honorable Justice Ulukayo de Ariwola. You have the Vice Chairman, Honorable Justice Mary Peter Odili. You have a former President of the Court of Appeal, Umaru Abdullahi, seated here. He's in the 80s, but he has come here to say, I want to rejoice with these young ones. You are my Lord, one of the best the Commonwealth has produced, a former CDA, Mahmoud Muhammad. Justice Walter Onoge was here yesterday, a former Chief Justice of Nigeria. You have Suleiman Galadima, you have Paul Adamu Galindi, you have Justice Abu Aboki, you have Justice J. I. Okoro of the Supreme Court. You read them in the law reports. You read their forensic judgments. You have Justice S. P. Ipei of the Portacol Division. You have Justice Gumel, a presiding justice of the Court of Appeal. You have Justice Ita Mbamba of Kano. You have the Senator Michael Bamidele, chairman of the Judiciary Committee of the Senate and his colleague, Honorable Luke, of the Court of, of uh, the House of Representatives. You have this young man, who is the oldest of the live benchers. She's a woman law, a woman law, live bencher. You have my two classmates here, Masi Okafo and the Kwaku Fatima, my own classmates, 1976. And what again are we talking about? <laughs> 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 
borrowing the language of that flamboyant politician. And by the way, the men of timber and caliber, they are all here. The jurisprudential potentates, they are all here. <laughs> From the composition of the body, it is crystal clear that it is not just a highly disciplined and revered institution, but also a confluence and melting part of the critical sectors of the legal profession in Nigeria. It is a body corporate, a perpetual succession, it has its own seal, and is also imbued with the power and jurisdiction to make regulations for itself and the legal profession very rich in history and tradition, as well as antecedent. How we inaugurated on 27 November 1971 with 16 pioneer members. Since then, it's, been, it's produced 49 chairmen, myself being the 50th, and myself also being the 25th chairman of the body of benchers from the bar. 25 have come from the bench. But I'm, I am, by the grace of God, the, the 50th chairman. Under these regulations, and which the regulations were made pursuant to the provisions of the enabling statute, assumption to office of its chairman is always seamless, not contested, not controversial, not rancorous or uncertain. The term of office of the chairman is only for one year, from March of the preceding year to March of the following year, and the position of chairmanship of the body is rotated between the bar and the bench, that is, if a member of the bar the chairman, as I am now, the vice chairman, she automatic, automatically divorced on the bench, like the horrible justice may repeat out the CFR presently is. At the end of my tenure as chairman, in March, or March, come March 31, 2023, honorable justice may repeat out the CFR shall assume office as chairman of the body, while I will transit to join the committee of federals as, as a past chairman. This is the last call. I'm presiding over. And I thank God. It's been beautiful all this while. It's been very glorious. The program of events of today details the names of life benchers according to their seniority and precedence. And succession follows the same precedence as listed in the program. It's not just a matter of formality that the name of the most senior life bencher is introduced as introduced by, it by the bar and seconded by the bench at the point of transition. Co-sparing our respective lives, every life bencher from the bar has an idea of when he or she is likely to assume office as the vice chairman of the body. A prelude to his eventually becoming the chairman is a tradition that we met and has been sustained for years. We are proud to inform you the world that our transition is always seamless and has never been rancorous. Needless to add, that the body of benchers is not an appendage of the federal government or any government or any association or any institution or agency, howsoever. It is an independent and autonomous body. It's not controlled remotely. It's not controlled in the media. It's not controlled on the social media. It's not controlled on the electronic media. You can't control these people, these are leaders, remotely or otherwise. As for the jurisdiction of the body to discipline any lawyer, such is exercised through the Legal Practitioners Dictionary Committee, LPDC. Although it's not a committee, it's a committee of the body of benchers. It's not controlled by the body. It's not dictated to by the body. Its directives go directly on appeal to the Supreme Court. We have nothing to do with it, although it's a body of the body. Or the, it's a creation of the, um, it's, it's a body under the body. It's a committee under the body. But we do not control it. Let me give you an example. We are all learning. The president of Nigeria, upon approval by Senate, and after the NJC might have submitted names, appoints the chief justice of Nigeria and justices of the Supreme Court. Ditto for the Court of Appeal. The same thing happens at the state level. Does that mean that the president controls the judges? No. It's the same thing. That's and you know, the, the, the fairest example we can give you. The body of benchers and we want to plead that the proceedings before the LPDC should not be sensationalized, not advertised. Should not, don't let us preempt it. That's why we say we are lawyers. 
We have very rich traditions. You don't put people on trial and be, you know, advertising. Even before the, 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 the rich are served on there. It's never done. It's not part of our tradition. From March 2022 to date, here on this body, successive chairmen take over from and improve on the achievements of their predecessors. At this point, may I appreciate all my predecessors in office. And I said this about them on 29th of March 2022, when this complex was officially commissioned by Mr. President. And I said, I stand here on behalf of the body of benchers to applaud the tenaciousness of purpose, the potency of emotional allegiance and unswerving audacity. We date back to several decades. The benchers complex, which has just been commissioned by Mr. President, is but a part of a unique blend of aspirations, which took roots exactly 30 years ago. So much time, talents, and treasures have been invested into this ed edifice. And when I recall the varied stretch of sacrifices made to the realization of this unique facility, my lecture is best captured in the walls of the world acclaimed bar, William Shakespeare, when he said, I can, no, I can no other answer make but thanks, and thanks, and ever thanks. Once again, I appreciate all members of the Body of Ventures for their contributions, both in cash and kind, to the realization of our dream. And I want to congratulate you. You are the first set of lawyers to be called to the bar in this complex after its commissioning. <laughs> At a meeting of 21st June 2022, we inaugurated the Judiciary Advisory Committee, charged among others, with the responsibility of constantly interfacing with the members of the bench in order to take up their concerns and frustrations with appropriate authorities and also to put in place an acceptable package, salary and welfare-wise, for them. We are not unaware of what is happening to our judges in Nigeria today, both at the state and federal levels. Judges are poorly underpaid. Pensions and gratuities are not paid as at when due. Judges retire. They don't have nowhere to hide their heads. To us and to us here on this body, these are some of the critical issues we should face and which the legal profession should face as an entity. And that was why I told Mr. President on 28 July 2022, when we met him, I said about the committee, that is a committee is not unaware of the report of the committee on the review of judicial salaries and conditions of service set up by Mr. President government as far back as August 2018. But our report was not out and we pleaded with Mr. President to direct his release. And we also apprised the government through the president of what was happening at the Supreme Court with, and pleaded with them to urgently do something at ameliorating the unfavorable conditions under which judges of that APS court perform their constitutional functions. In response, Mr. President said, may I publicly comment, sorry, when Mr. President was here on 29th September 2022, he said this about the committee, May I publicly commend Mr. President, I said about him, Mr. President's response to our plea on behalf of the judiciary on 29th, 28th July 2022. More particularly, Mr. President's apt response to my address when he enthused us that a democratic government, like the one we operate, standing on a tripod comprising the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary, cannot stand where one of its three pillars, the judiciary is not properly nurtured, maintained, and sustained to deliver on his pivotal constitutional duties. And in Mr. President's response to us when he came here, he said, that was on 29th September, because we also made, we repeated the same plea, we made the same supplication. May I restate my commitment towards this idea? In similar vein, have been intimated of the engagement of consultants by the body through his Judiciary Advisory Committee to, amongst other things, come up with a peer review of the conditions of service of judicial officers in Nigeria with other countries. I honestly look forward to the completion of this peer review and the submission of the recommendation, and this will assist us to review the welfare packages. Without any gain saying, the initiative put in place by this august body is yielding fruitful and commendable results from every angle. I want to commend the Attorney General of the Federation for his assistance, for his understanding, for his support. And uh, we have for now engaged the services 
of a financial, the service of, a, of a, a firm of accountants, Ernst and Young, to work out the peer review earlier referred to, and by a letter personally signed by me on 26 September 2022, to different stakeholders and relevant institutions, including heads of course, attorneys, general, in all the states, the Revenue Mobilization, Allocation and Fiscal Commission, the President of the Nigerian Bar Association, the Senate, the House of Reps, and others. We pleaded with each of them to cooperate with the firm in carrying out its assignments. And I'm happy to inform you that the firm will soon submit its report and will hand same or present same to Mr. President. Now, this question, is Nigeria overproducing lawyers? We need to address it. These are part of the critical issues we have to address in the profession. This question may seem rhetorical, but it's essential we address and face it at this point, or raise it as a poster, to enable us to have an insight into the variables for us to appreciate the issues at hand and profound solutions to them. In doing that as well, we need to graphically peep Peek into the past six years to refresh our memories as to the number of lawyers we have churned out on a yearly basis as against reali the realities of our labor market. And hear me, in July 2016, 2,259 lawyers were called to the bar. In November of the same year, 4,169. In July 2017, 1,469. While in November, we called 4,297. In July 2018, we called 1,561 lawyers, and in November the same year, 4,779. In July 2019, 866 lawyers were called to the bar, while 4,459 were enrolled in November of the same year. It was only in um, 2020 that we enrolled 1,875 because of the outbreak of COVID. In July 2021, we called 5,215 lawyers, in July 2022, we called 1,504 to the bar. While this December, we are calling 4,711. In summary, between 2016 and now, we have produced 37,164 lawyers. For next year, in addition to the swelling number of qualified graduates from Nigerian universities, universities to be admitted to the Nigerian Law School and subsequently called to the bar, we already have a backlog of 1,083 students from the National Open University of Nigeria who have since completed their remedial program and now are waiting the bar part two program. You know, everybody wants to read law. People retire, and with all respect to retire their civil servants here, they want to read law. Doctors want to read law. Accountants want to read law. Uh, Ex-ministers want to read law. Ex-commissioners want to read law. And what do we do with the legal profession? Since our common law derives its origin from the United Kingdom, and bearing in mind the fact that our entire legal and judicial system are similar to ours, let us quickly take a look for the purpose of comparison at the situation in the United Kingdom from 2017 to 2021. In 2017, the total number of solicitors and practicing barristers was 202335. It increased to 209469 in 2018, translating to 7,129 of new intakes of solicitors and barristers, and a 3.52% increase. The number rose to 216724 in 2019, demonstrating an increase of 7,260 and a percentage increase of 3.47. The figure rose to 223349 in 2020, a numerical increase of 6,625 and a percentage increase of 3.06. In 2021, the number rose to 230423, 48, an increase of 7,079, transmitting to a 3.17 increase. Why it will appear, especially, that Nigeria, in comparison with the United Kingdom, in relation to our population, might not be overproducing lawyers? And why the population of Nigeria is about four times that of the United Kingdom? Empirical insight into the two economies will show that why the United Kingdom churns out solicitors and barristers that are systematically proportionate to the growing demands of the economy and population. Same cannot be said of the Nigerian situation where lawyers are producing irrespective of the harsh economic realities being faced and the capacity of the system to cater for them. To my mind, 
This situation should be of great concern to the leading stakeholders in the legal profession and the justice delivery sector in Nigeria. I have my serious doubt if our labor market absorbs about 20% of the lawyers being produced annually by us, meaning that about 80% of these new entrants are unabsorbed or unemployed on a yearly basis, taking a bearing conservatively from the past six years. There is what in economies is called disguised unemployment. If you employ a lawyer and you are paying him 50,000, that is disguised unemployment. That is not employment. Recently, it was released by the government that 123 million Nigerians, out of an estimation of 216, are poor. It is imperative for those of us who are leaders of the profession to find out how many legal practitioners are classified among us as poor and the percentage of poor lawyers in the population based on the number of lawyers in the, on the role. A proper auditing in this wise will reveal a more escalating report in respect of poor lawyers in the country. What then do we do? The answer does not lie in the solution profiled by Shakespeare in uh, Henry the Sixth that the first thing we do, let us kill all the lawyers. They can't kill us. But for us to now soberly, honestly, diligently, painstakingly, sympathetically, and em em empathetically look into this gloomy situation and fashion out ways of addressing them rather than engaging in very unproductive ventures, utterances, strife, vituperations, petition writing, letter writing, addressing the social media, posting. Essentially, what we need and must embark on is a mutual cooperation between all sectors of the profession and not mutual destruction as is going on now. For those of us who think that we have made it or that we have arrived, we cannot continue to rest in our, on our common zones thinking that we are safe. And if when these young ones we unleash into the unproductive system are not catered for, to my mind as well, we cannot continue to boast of our success if our successors continue to wallop in penury. May I therefore plead with senior lawyers all over the country to improve within their respective means the welfare packages of junior counsel in their chambers. It is not realistic for any counsel, but whatever might be the newness or greenness of his or her week to be paid any wage equivalent to the government's minimum wage of 30,000 naira per month. Without being immodest, a new court member posted to any law office deserves more than that as a supplementary allowance. Now, for the records, in 2003, the executive of the Nigerian Bar Association, which I proudly led, we fashioned out ideas and pleaded with senior members of the bar in different, in four zones of the country to pay wages not below what we recommended. The records are there. And all of us, the body of benchers, the Nigerian Bar Association, or any other institution, we have to look into this matter. We, for a start, the body of benchers, through its mentoring committee, under the able chairmanship of J.K. Gassama, OFRSAN, will be commencing a mentoring program for new entrants into the professionals from the first quarter of 2023. The program, which will be both physical and virtual, will spread across all the six geopolitical zones as well as the federal and capital territory. This innovation will offer insights into how new entrants to the bar can make a, a success out of the profession of law. Irrespective of the challenging economy, it is not just tested and experienced lawyers that will be called upon to address new weeks at the program. But also captains of industry and other relevant professionals we will call upon them to offer cognitive counseling on how lawyers can make a headway in life, particularly in Nigeria, notwithstanding the nuances of our economy and politics. I join all of you to participate in the program. It will be so enriching. Well, they will advise you on how to use law as a business, as a profession, as everything, and how to, you know, if you want to specialize, 
the committee will bring in people that will advise you. Proliferation of law school campuses. May I plead, may we plead with the National Assembly to stop time with the idea of promulgating laws or amending the Legal Practitioners Act, sorry, Legal Education Act, to pave way for the proliferation of law school campuses, particularly around the neighborhoods of some lawmakers. It is within the exec exclusive prerogative of the Council of Legal Education in consultation with the body of benchers to establish new law school campuses. While I do not question the jurisdiction of the National Assembly to make laws as appropriate, law school campuses cannot be established without clearance from the Council of Legal Education. What we need now is improvement and upgrading of the existing law school campuses. Using the newly commissioned Graham Douglas Law School Campus, for record, built and equipped by the River State Government as a model, I dare say that this is the best in the country for now. Admonition. Irrespective of what the state of the economy, both municipally and globally, might be, I admonish you to aim for the best. Prepare to soar like the eagle. Look at the array of legal hackers who are here today to call you to the bar, amongst who are the very best and finest in the legal profession. In your mind's eyes, sell your hands to them and made them points of contact for your present and future, praying to God that in the nearest future you'll be like or outgrow your points of contact. We did that during our own time, and God answered our prayers. Always pray for them not to fall, not to stumble. That's how it should be. Don't walk towards pulling those who are there up. Nobody is perfect. Not even the critics, the, those who engage in our name. Don't do that. I want to plead with you. I signed your certificates. Years back, you look back and remind yourself of the counseling we are giving you today. Our profession boasts of and parades three key words noble, honorable, and learned. Convey these flagship words in your endeavors undertakings and relationship with others. Act nobly in and out of court. Behave honorably in all your dealings with your colleagues and clients, as well as with the bench. For those of you who will end up in the legal practice, in legal practice and those who will end up on the bench, do not engage in strife, blackmail, muslinging, campaign of calumny, treachery, or any attempt to run or pull anyone down, free from envy like a plague, for envy breeds hatred and unjustified content for others. We are witnessing that. Appreciate your colleagues and peers, as well as senior members of the profession, who have received God's benevolence and pray that your own time will come. Nobody can rubbish anyone God has blessed. It's not possible. It's just not practicable. God does not sleep. And for those of us who are Christians, the Bible says, touch not my anointed, unto my prophet do no harm. For those of you who will be plunging into the legal practice, I can assure you that it is a very rewarding venture, very entertaining, illuminating, fulfilling, energizing, and exciting. Nevertheless, avoid physical and verbal punches. Be resolute and committed in the defense and ventilation of the causes of your clients, whether in civil or criminal proceedings. And do not be swayed or distracted by some colleagues who may come to challenge or accuse you for defending a particular client or taking up any specific cause, which in their own thinking is notorious. Display your learning by your robust and forensic submissions, both formal and, both formal and oral, in the presentation and ventilation of your client's courses or through informed essays, papers, papers, articles in law journals and literatures, rather than dissipating energy on the social media to ventilate other grievances or causes which you know nothing about. Be slow at commenting on matters and subjects, the particulars of which are, you are not seized, as that this is becoming the unfanciful fashion nowadays. Put calls across to your colleagues to ask questions on issues relating to them, rather than jumping into condemning them. When we were called to the bar, it was drawn into our psyche and consciousness that if we were given any instruction to institute an action against any lawyer, we should 
first and foremost, reach out to that particular lawyer, apprise him of the subject and hear his own side before going ahead with the particular instruction. Although this was to be done after putting the client on notice, we saw this tradition was codified, but later realized that it was rooted in the esprit de corps between lawyers who addressed themselves as learned friends. Show respect, you can, those of us who started practice in e-learning, and I'm happy some of them are still here, at your adju, 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 at all of us, we would, we would drive down. There was no mobile phone in those days. We go and ask. If the man was seen, we would knock. We say, oh, God. A client said, so, so, so. We have asked him that we are coming to see you. Then, if he was still recalcitrant, we have played our own part. We will now file the action. They are here. That was the way we started. To our noble judges, please, I'm pleading with you, avoid being rude, haughty, naughty, or tardy in all situations and circumstances. The way of committing contempt, either in facia curiae or ex facia curiae. When you address a magistrate or judge, don't put your hand in your pocket or stretch your leg on the chair. It's so rude. You cannot intimidate any judge or magistrate. It's never done. You influence them by your forensic and robust submissions. Those of you who have read Don Denny, one of the very best in one of his books, he said at times he would have made up his mind on a particular subject, but after listening to robust submissions of counsel, he will be persuaded. That's the way it is done. And I, as the chairman who is calling you to the bar today, that's the way I do it. No other way. Now to our noble judges, before whom these young ones would start appearing, please be patient with them. Exercise your awesome power to commit for content sparingly. Most humbly, may I draw the attention of our honorable judges and magistrates to the encounter between one Miss Stone on one hand and Lord Denny on the on, and others on the other. Miss Stone, on refusal of our application, got so angry that she first threw a book of case at the judges which passed between Justice Diplock and Lord Denny, who did not say a word. They ignored her. She threw another, which went wide, but equally ignored her, and she exclaimed, I am running out of ammunition. But the justices still ignored her completely, forcing her to walk towards the door, saying to the justices, I congratulate your lordships on your coolness under fire. Also, most humbly, I commend to her Trial judges, the case, the Supreme Court decision in Akon and Fachasi, where a foremost revived and potentate of the profession asked the court to give an assurance that it would not be biased against his client in a particular matter, bearing in mind the ruling of the court on a previous occasion. And what the court just said was that to charge a court with bias is a very serious thing indeed, and to ask for court's assurance is more serious. No more, no less. Some of you might end up in the private sector. I beseech you to always remember that you come from a noble and honorable profession. Thus, let your nobility attend and attest to the programming of all your activities, legal advice and submissions. Undoubtedly, a good number of you might venture into politics. You have one of us here, Senator Okoyemi Bamidele, is the chairman of the Judiciary Committee in the Senate. He has made it in the legal profession. He did very well. And he is a proud representative of the legal profession in politics today. Emulate people like that. That's why they are here today to call you to the bar. May your entrance into politics be a game changer for Nigeria. Behold me at this point to fortrightly prepare your minds for the inevitability, inevitability of bumpy rights as passions, tyrants, general vicissitudes and such other contingencies to which all humans are susceptible. These eventualities of universal character, sparing no one, irrespective of illustrousness or nobility or pedigree, don't say because your parents are very illustrious or you come from a very illustrious background that you won't face challenges. It's not possible.
tribal or ethnic affiliations, religious inclinations, influence, eminence, or dexterity. Yours faithfully is, of course, a living example. I still face it. But be upright in all your dealings. So they cannot succumb, you can, they, you, they cannot override you, they cannot overrun you once you are upright. So I want to admonish you to be upright. Definitely there will be arrows here and there. But in the name of the living God, you will always triumph. For those of you here are Christians, you know as a fact that Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us that he was going about doing good. Despite his humility, kindness, and numerous acts of goodness demonstrated through healing the sick, raising the dead, was not only betrayed by one of his disciples, but later on sentenced to death on the cross in the hands of Pontius Pilate, at the insistence of Rautus Jew crowd who prayed for an amnesty for a notorious robber, negotiating that for the crucifixion of Lord Jesus Christ. For our Muslim colleagues, you should never be oblivious. Or the father that prophet Muhammad, peace be unto him. That's why his piety and righteousness was outlawed by his Christ men for doing nothing wrong. You all know that. He was drenched in his own blood due to the injuries sustained from missiles cast at him in the valley of Taif by children to whom he had shown kindness. He was poisoned by Kaiba, whom he had accommodated and shown unequal kindness. That is life for you, but be assured that God will make you triumph over all the vicissitudes of life and crown your efforts with success. I am a living example. Conclusion. The legal profession is an ancient and prestigious one. Where the domain clinical lawyer accords you a lot of respect instantly, wherever you go or appear, consciously or otherwise, you also draw attention to yourself once you are introduced as a lawyer. I know you, you will go out today. Before I say Jack Robinson, we say, I am barrister. <laughs> <laughs> you like it. I know young lawyers like it. Maybe we did it once upon a time. <laughs> People around you, we always want to test or taunt you about your learnedness and learning. In actual fact, more particularly so in these days and times when law has become a global commodity. Your dressing and carriage should be neat and elegant, not riotous or notorious. Your celebration of today should always be moderate and not out of tune with the culture and deep traditions of the legal profession. Do not go out in, in half nude dresses and never send out scary photographs of yourselves. Adequately equip yourself. You know, we witness this, we witness this Low situation, low, very disturbing drama at the last call in July. Please, we don't want any one of you to engage in this type of dressing, this type of celebration. Please, I, we are pleading with you. Adequately equip yourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually for the challenges ahead from today. Needless reminding you of the need to, for you to embrace information and communication technology. There is no better way for you to foray into the profession and its fortunes aside this route. I commend to you the bestseller titled The End of Lawyers, Asking Questions, Rethinking the Nature of Legal Services by Richard Soskind. It is a must read for you and other lawyers. Even at my own level, I've read it several times. It provides numerous solutions and pathways to a lawyer's success in this age where we work on the information superhighway. Can you be on your feet? By virtue of the past conferred on me, as the chairman of the body of benches, I've signed your call to bar certificates. It's a statutory duty which I have performed. And when we talk of statutory duties, elementary law tells us that 
You cannot restrain someone from performing a statutory duty. Elementary law, you can't restrain the president of Nigeria from performing his duties as a president. You can't restrain the chief justice of Nigeria from performing his duties as a chief justice. In the same manner, you cannot restrain me. <laughs> <laughs> from performing my duties as the chairman of the body of ventures who signed your certificates. There will be chaos if those imbued with powers and jurisdiction to perform statutory duties back out because we hear you know, news on social media or accusations. Life is not meant for the coward. For, but for those who are sure-footed and who are courageous, and for those who know they are onions. Therefore, I assure you that these certificates that you are holding are yours in fee simple. You know that terminology is a landlord terminology. You know the difference between leasehold and freehold? Okay, it is freehold. It's for life, for life, for life. Chairman's charge. In keeping with the time-honored tradition, I, as the chairman of the body of benches, we close this address with a chant to our newly called learned friends. Thus, you may now go forth in your new weeks from this day forward to serve Nigeria and serve humanity in justice without fear of favor, affection, or ill will. Can you resume your seat? I thank you all for the audience. I want to appreciate the members of the body of benchers who are here. And we say, God bless you. I appreciate your support in the past few months that I've been chairman of the body of benchers. You are giving me encouragement. You are giving me succor. And I remember my Lord, the Honorable Justice Mahmoud Mohammed, at our meeting of Monday, when a letter came that very morning, he said, Mr. Chairman, don't be upset. I got worse petitions when I was the Chief Justice of Nigeria, and yours will not be the difference, or will not be a difference. I want to appreciate you all. I appreciate your fatherly, brotherly, and friendly advice and assistance. Look at them, all of us here. Look at these beautiful heads, beautiful ladies and gentlemen. God bless all of you. I thank you for the audience. Mr. Chairman, sir, distinguished benchers here present, we we'll now go to the segment of price presentation. Mr. Chairman, we have a total number of 119 students, the new weeks, who made first class. And for the records, may I ask them to stand up for recognition?
You can take a bow. You can be seated. Mr. Chairman, sir, and distinguished benchers, we have the second segment of persons who distinguish themselves in various subjects. And with the kind permission of Mr. Chairman, I'm going to call some of the distinguished members of the Board of Ventures here present to be engaged in presentation of this award. We are commencing with the first category. May I invite my Lord, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Honorable Justice Olukayode Ariwola, to please help us with this. The first property law practice, Dada Omotayo Mary. Second prize, Chizoma Emeka Joshua. Third prize, Ola Depo Oluwatobula Joseph. Thank you, my Lord. For the second category, may I invite my Lord, the Vice Chairman of the Body of Ventures, Honorable Justice Mary Peter Odili, CFR, to help us with this. <laughs> Civil litigation, first prize, Odinaka Zion Chisom. <laughs> Civil litigation, second prize, Chisoma Emeka Joshua. If you have your name, please make it snappy. Third prize, Akpangbo Odinaka Sylvester. The donors for the prizes, civil litigation, the donors are Honorable Justice Olujide Shomolu, Chief Richard Akinjide, and Prince Bola Ajibola. Thank you, my Lord. The third category of criminal litigation, may I invite my Lord, Honorable Justice Mahmoud Mohammed, former Chief Justice of Nigeria and former Chairman of the Body of Ventures to help us with this. First prize, the name of the donors, Sir Lionel Brett and um, Chief Babatunde Abiodun Ibironke. The first prize goes to Omodayo Esther Ayola. The second prize is donated by Chief Debo Akande of Blessed Memory, and the recipient is Ibiduni Tawakalia Ibitola. The third prize is donated by Dr. Mudiaga Oje, and the recipient is Ebo Lovet Akumachiku.
Thank you, my Lord. That will be all, my Lord. Thank you, my Lord. The fourth category, corporate law practice, may I invite my Lord, Honorable Justice Umar Abdullahi, former chairman of the Body of Ventures and a former president of the Court of Appeal. The award is donated by Honorable Justice J. Oshofala and Honorable Justice Ayo Gabriel Yerikefe. The recipient of this award is Awoleye Elizabeth Oluwakemi. The second donor is Dr. Nabograham Douglas of Blessed Memory, and the recipient is Odeja Omowumi Opemi. The third prize is donated by Chief Adeboyega Awomolo, SN, who is here present. And the recipient is Aroye Wum Oluwamayoa Arafat. For the fifth category, yes, all, Thank you. for the fifth category, may I invite Chief A.S. Awamolo, S.A.N., to help us with this, please. Yes. Professional Ethics. The donor for the first prize, Honorable Justice Kayode Esho of Blessed Memory, Chief Kayode, Chief Idowu Shofola, S.A.N. of Blessed Memory, and the recipient is Arokun Esther Oluwafumilala. I beg your pardon, the Body of Ventures is also a donor of this category of award. Second prize donated by Mr. Mohammed Bello Adoke, SN, and the recipient is Onyekibo Elizabeth Obianujo. Third prize category donated by Mr. Damien Dodo, OFRSN, who is also a member of the Body of Ventures. It goes to Chizoma Emeka Joshua. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. The sixth category, the special prize for disabled and challenged, physically challenged. This um, prize is donated by Mrs. H. A. Balogun, who is the first female chairman of the Body of Ventures. And the recipient of this award is Dada Ridwan Oloruwaju.
Do you have one you keep boy Elizabeth or Ganu Ju? The price for the disability is like the person is not here, so we can proceed, please. For the seventh category here. Okay, may I invite Chief Omolo once again, please? To, it's the same category, professional. And Chizoma and Mecca Joshua. Sorry for the break. We have the category of the best overall female students of the year. This award is donated by the National Association of Women Judges. May I please invite one of us, a bencher here, Mrs. Fatima Kwaku, to do this presentation, please. This is Fatima Makaku, MFR Life Venture. The recipient of this award is Dada Omotaya Best overall male student of the year. The award is presented by Mr. Yusuf O. Ali SN, who is also a life venture. The recipient of this award is Chisoma Emeka Joshua. <laughs> May I invite Saji of Ojile Okafor O and SN to do the presentation, please. Next category is best female student in criminal litigation. The award is donated by Mrs. Oluwato in Dohati, a former director of academics at the Nigerian Law School. And the recipient of this award is Omodayo Esther Ayola. May I kindly invite Chief Albert Akomuji, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, a live venture to do the presentation, please. We also have the best female student in civil litigation. The award is presented, is donated by, no, sir, you can. 
The award is donated by Honorable Justice Aloma Mokhtar, GCON, former Chief Justice of Nigeria, and the recipient of the award is Ome Susan Choma and Dada Omotayo Mary. Then the best female student in civil and criminal litigation. The award is donated by Chief J.K. Gazama, Senior Advocate of Nigeria in Life Venture. The recipient is Ibiduni Tawakalit Ibitola. May I invite Mrs. H.A. Turaki, Life Venture, to do this presentation, please. Thank you, ma'am. Then we have best overall female student and best overall male student. The donors is Nigerian Bar Association. May I kindly invite Justice Inyang Nkoro, Justice of the Supreme Court of the Life Venture, to please help us with this. The recipient of this award is Dada Omotayo Mary. For the male category, Chisoma Emeka Joshua. Yes, thank you, my Lord. Then we have the category of best students of the year. They are in first, second, and third category. May I just read out the name of the donors first? Sir Ade Tokumbo Ademola Kayode, GCON, of course, was a one time chairman of the body of ventures. We have Dr. Taslim Elias, GCON, Honorable Justice Atanda Fatai Williams, Honorable Justice Mohammed Bello, Chief TOS Benson. Honorable Justice Silvanus Ayare Adria. Now, may I kindly invite the Chairman of the Body of Ventures, Chivole Olani Perkun, CFR SN, to do the presentation. The recipient, number one, Dada Omotayo Neri. Best student of the year, second category, a second position rather, Chisom Emeka Joshua. <laughs> Chisom Emeka Joshua. Then the third best student of the year, Aruyewu. Oluwa Mayowa Arafat. <laughs> my 
most promising graduating student. <laughs> Presented by Honorable Justice Sylvanus Ayere Adjua, the recipient is Dada Omotai Omeri. My, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, sir, the last question, yes. Most promising graduate in Dada Omotayo Mary. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, sir. The last but not the least category is the Council Star Prize of the Year. May I invite the Chairman of the Council of Legal Education, Chief Emeka Ngige, OFR SN, to do this, please. The recipient of this award, Dada Omotayo Mary. The Chairman Body of Ventures The, the Chairman Body of Ventures has graciously approved that we invite the parents of Dada Omotayo Mary to join us here. May I invite the chairman body of ventures? Okay, Chief Olani, we had already heard the vice chairman. May I invite my lord, the CJN, to please join in this photograph? <laughs>
by the order of the body of ventures, I now declare this call to bar ceremony closed. I enjoy all the new weeks to proceed to the Supreme Court for enrollment, please. But be sure you obtain your call to bar certificate before leaving here. The order of recess after the national anthem shall be as follows. The chairman and benchers first, followed by the academic and professional staff of the Nigerian Law School, invited guests, then the new weeks will file out last. Thank you and God bless you all. Shall we rise for the national anthem? television event.